Hey guys, this is Rob with another Revit electrical video for you. In this one, we are going to look at creating and working on a electrical Revit project, but using CAD backgrounds or floor plans. So uh, let's get right into it. So today I'm using Revit 2023. When we don't have to match an architect or other consultants Revit version, then I can use whatever I like. And I'm using 23 lately. I also have 24, but I'm going to do this one in 23. We're starting from scratch here, and I haven't done a video about that for a while. So let's remember how we do this. We're going to do a new project, and the template file is very important. We are going to use our company's electrical template, and it's a little dated. It's a 2019 version, but it still upscales for what we need. Looking at doing a 2024 template here soon, and I plan to make a video of that for you. So let's get this converted real quick and this project started. It takes a minute. It ends up upgrading every family that is within this template, so it takes a little bit. So now here we are at our starting view, and let us jump into a floor plan view. I've got some just basic plans set up here in our template. An overall working view. I use this to set things up and our template has a little light fixture in the middle that we don't need. But here's just a, a raw floor plan power view. Now we don't have an architectural model to bring in. Like I said, we're going to do this one with a CAD background. Now, why would you end up with a CAD background? Well, some structural engineers, civil engineers, or even architects that we work with haven't done everything in Revit. And so some things are done just still with AutoCAD. And we like to do as many projects as we can in the office in Revit. It keeps all of our people up to speed on using Revit and, you know, keep your skills up there. And plus it's more practice makes perfect if someone's just learning this. So we're going to do this in Revit. Now, one thing I would caution you against is if a project's going to involve the entire building with all the walls, windows, doors, things like that, I do not want to have to create my own architectural model. I only do this when I have very little area within a building, for example, that I need to be modeled for me to put panels and receptacles and, and, and lights and things in. So that's the caveat to this is it's only applicable to certain projects. Well, this one happens to be kind of a seismic upgrade. So it's only dealing with a few walls within a school. So just want to put that out there. So now we want to get our CAD background into this project. So we go up to insert. And one thing I'll note is we do not want to import CAD right here. We don't want to import it. If you import CAD, it creates a number of import, it puts import in front of it, type, line types, things like that to clutter up all of your Revit behind the scenes things. So we don't need to import the CAD. We just want to link it in as a reference, like an XREF in CAD. We just want it to be a link. So we went over here to link CAD like we would link in an architectural model. So we want to link the CAD and I have in our tutorial XREF folder, which we use for references for links, a title block and a floor plan here. So click on the floor plan. You can see that it's just a CAD floor plan of a small school is what this is. And we want to check down here at a few things. Colors, it may try to say preserve colors. Well, we want to actually make this black and white for our uses. All levels and layers, we want to auto detect the units. Uh, we can correct the lines that are slightly off axis. I've, I've tried both ways. It doesn't make a lot of difference. I'll leave that on. Positioning, auto origin to origin is fine because we can move it around anyway. And we're not trying to match up with any other uh, units right now. If we had another model in here along with CAD, we may have to pay attention to how we bring this in. But for us, origin to origin is fine. And this is mainly is super important on site plans when you really only want the site plan to show up on your site plan view. You don't need the site plan. Let's say it's a civil site plan. You don't need that to show up everywhere. So, but also I find it works better if I just do current view only and then I can copy and paste this background to other views as needed as I want to. So current view only, make sure that's checked and say open and it will insert it right there. It's black lines, like we said, no colors. First of all, it comes in and it automatically pins it. 
in the in the current view only. I need to copy from one view to another. So I need to use the control C clipboard copy. Go to my view and I can up here go to paste. If I want it on many different views, I can do this and then I can paste it to a bunch of other views or I can just go back to modify paste to the current align to the current view. There. So that puts my CAD background in this current view. So if we want to control the line type, the line weight, or even the shading of this background, if I want to make it a half tone, for example, I would do that in visibility graphics overrides. It automatically assigns it to a power plan eighth inch. Now in this project, I know that I want this my overall view to be 16th of an inch. And speaking of views, let's go ahead and get this cropped in by selecting down here under extents scope box. Right now it's none. If I select my overall scope box and hit apply, you can see it automatically crops it down to just the area I want. Now, as it turns out, I also only want this overall view to be at a 16th of an inch scale. I only have a view template for an eighth inch. I have one for a 16th inch built into my template for a roof, well, that doesn't apply here. So what I need to do is create a 16th inch power plan. So I could just go to duplicate and then I have to type this all in. But I, the shortcut I like to use is I first like to pretend I'm going to rename it, copy that name. So I have less typing. Now I want to duplicate and control V to copy it. Now I can just change the scale. Just a little lazy man's trick that I use. 16th inch and then of course I need to change that scale to 16th of an inch. Okay. And it is assigned. So now this plan will be a 16th of an inch. Now what I want to do too is control the how heavy this background is in this view. It's part of a view so I can't just jump up here to visibility graphics overrides. It's all grayed out. I have to go into my view template and modify it there. So in view template. Now what I want to modify in here is not my model or my annotation. I want to override the in import. A CAD, even though it's linked, and they call it an import, edit an import, and here's my CAD background. I can also get to all the layers. As you can see here, I can turn on and off layers this way. There's another way to turn layers on and off, which I will show you in a second, which I find much easier than trying to figure out CAD layer names. But here we can control the half tone of this. So half tone, okay, okay, changes the background to a half tone, which I like. Another thing I notice here is many times in CAD you'll have multiple scales visible as different layers. These grid bubbles have two different scales of grid bubble. So I want to control those. Now, controlling the CAD background within Revit can be a little tricky. The background may be pinned. It's not pinned in this view yet. So let me go ahead and pin it just to make sure. But I have pinned selected so that I can select pinned items. The control of this CAD background is controlled within this view template. Again, because in here it says include. All of these things that are checked are included in this view template. If I want to control the layers of this CAD, independently of the view template, I can take it out of the view template and then I have complete control over it. Now the only hazard of doing this is that I have to do this for each view. The template won't control it. So you have to think about that. I can change it this way and then I can put it back into this view template later if I want. But I only have a few plans and, and the way that works out on this project is I only have a you know one or two plans and I don't mind changing the CAD individually without the template. So for example, now that I've unchecked that from the template, now if I click on the CAD, I get some CAD commands. And the main thing is I can hit query. If I hit query, now I can hover over pieces of this CAD background and see what layers they're on. For example, here. There's the block, the layer name is this name, and it I have a C16. What that means is that grid is for a 16th inch plan, which I have. So, okay. The little guy is for an 8th inch plan, and in this view, I'm at 16th, so I can hide that layer. So, it hides that layer. So, this is an easy way to go through and just find what layer things are on and hide them this way 
I don't want to delete the layer, but I can hide the layer in this view rather than trying to find it in this list of layers. As you can see, there's a lot of layers. This way I can turn things on and off from just selecting it and querying it. So other things I want to turn on and off is I see here that this CAD background must have been from some other project that had some demolition. So Because if, if I click on the query, this is a demo. Well, on my project, I'm not doing any demo. It's already been demoed, so I want to hide the demo. And then this here is a, another demo. Hide that. So you can see very simply you can turn off layers by just clicking them. That fixes that plan. Oh, and if you're getting anything out of this video, I'd sure appreciate you hitting that like button down there so others can hear about it. And if you want to see more of this, maybe even hit that subscribe button. I appreciate that, guys. Thanks. Now, I also want to create a enlarged partial view plan of this area here. So what I can do is I can simply duplicate this view with detailing means with annotations. The CAD insert is treated like, or the CAD link is treated like a detail item. So I want to duplicate with detailing so that I get the CAD background. As you can see, it came with it. This one I can just call, I can call it first floor partial. Go from there. And maybe I'll give this a, a different number to sort it, like a point 0.1. And then in this partial plan, I can change my scope box to be a partial scope box. And it crops it down to the smaller version. But I also want it a different scale. So now I need to change my view template to my eighth inch scale. And it still has the import in it. I'm going to turn take it out so that I can control this. Now, how can I get these other bubbles back? For example, if I query this, that is the 16th inch. I want the 8th inch. So how do I get this 8th inch circle back? Well, to do that, I do need to go into the actual list and find it. Those are the demo. So we'll turn these back on. We need to find the grid symbol 8. And if I already know that I'm getting rid of my 16th, I can do it here. Or I can use query. So now that puts the grid bubbles down to the eighth inch bubbles that, that we want. So now we have backgrounds set up in our model. Next thing I think we should look at is levels. We only have one level in our project template. If I look at the south elevation, I only have one level. Now, if I'm going to be drawing things that need a view range, I'll need some more levels. So let me just add another level. So let's create similar. Now I could maybe find in the architectural plans or somewhere I can figure out what the actual levels of this are. For now, as a placeholder, I'm just going to put a level in. I know there is a mechanical loft or mezzanine in this project. So I'm going to label it just loft. I don't need to rename my view. So I'll just make a loft level. And then also, I may be doing some work on the roof. So I'm going to, again, just placeholder this. Put in a roof level just to get some more levels into this project. And it made plans for me, which I can rename or get rid of. Now what I can do is I can draw some walls in that I may need. And again, depends on which walls you need. Now I happen to know from looking at the structural work that this wall here is an important wall in the project. And some of these other walls may be important. So I'm going to draw some in that I think I may need to show devices. Now, the other thing too is you may not need to actually put in 3D models of receptacles, things like that. Maybe you just need symbols. So that's another thing is you can just create symbols as generic annotations that you can put in here. If you don't need to circuit them, you don't need the smart symbols makes it more like a CAD project but again it's still within Revit you're still practicing and using your Revit tools I can drag onto sheets I can print my sheets all together I can do a lot of things that are a benefit to do here versus CAD so if you want to do walls I simply just go to the architectural and hit a wall wall architectural and there's a number of different built-in walls under my camera here you can see we have generic five inch six inch eight inch you know pick whatever works let's say this wall maybe it's five Things kind of snap into CAD. If you get close, 
it's trying to find the center of a wall right there now it looks like this wall is not wide enough and if you're having trouble selecting the wall again make sure up here under select you have underlay elements because if I undo that it see it sees the wall as an underlay because it's not an electrical item so make sure you have your underlay elements selected so that you can select that wall and I can change it to let's say it's an 8 inch wall there we go that matches and I can drag this wall out and I can just put in the few walls that I need for my work let's say I even needed create similar I needed this wall down here I can start drawing this wall and it's a little bit off I can move it over as you can see it just kind of blends in and but if I hit 3d I have a wall and these walls are set up to the top is unconnected it's only a 10 foot wall I could have made the top go to up to level loft or up to the roof so I can do some architectural things pretend like you're an architect for a minute and do that so that's how I can get some walls that I need and I can mount a panel to this I can mount receptacles if I need to mount anything to these walls I have them and I'll just do the few that I need on a small remodel I don't need the whole school I don't need to go crazy but that's how I can do a project in Revit even using a CAD background so hopefully this gives you some idea how you can do that without a lot of extra work so the last thing I'd like to show you is how to deal with the title block again we're in a CAD world here but we want to do it in our Revit model so let's go down and look at a sheet we have some sheets set up in our project template that we can start from let's go to a floor plan power sheet we can see it comes in with the default AutoCAD title block let us drag our plan in I'm going to drag in our partial plan and let's see it fits on this sheet right there now what am I going to do for a title block well you can actually bring a CAD title block into a sheet and let me show you that it's the same thing we're going to insert we're going to link a CAD here's our title block black and white it, it only does current view only because we're kind of in a we're in a sheet view right now so it's not really a view and origin origin all this stuff is good okay import detected no valid elements in the files paper space do you want to import from model yes let's import from model whatever it was so there it is now I can just actually go to this title block and hit delete get rid of that title block now I have a CAD title block in you know line types may not be thick enough things like that but it for for our purposes it's typically close enough if we do need to modify this you know maybe we can go into CAD and start changing line weights and stuff like that but at least this puts the CAD title block into the project the sheet number and such will just be text that we use here and we can pick whatever size we need again you can get to the layers and eventually if I need to turn off this layer which is preliminary I can hide that so I have layer control as well in here on a sheet by sheet basis so again you can do this in CAD it's fairly quick fairly painless and I wish you luck in any future projects where you have to use CAD in your Revit model and until next time thanks for watching